Welcome, lovers of the spooky and the macabre, to this Halloween season tale of haunting and horror using the new World of Darkness supplement, Ghost Hunters. Only 65 hours left before the Kickstarter ends. It's already funded and plowing through stretch goals. Go check it out while you still have time. It's currently completed nine stretch goals and is only a short distance away from the 10th. It fits into any World of Darkness 20th anniversary game line and offers all kinds of new options to both play mortals and use them as antagonists and new ways to use ghosts beyond Wraith the Oblivion. Make sure you check it out before the Kickstarter ends and you're left alone in the dark with the haunting spirits. I am Tyler, Eldritch Echoes Online, and I will be your storyteller for the last installment of this terrifying tale. We are Vorpal Tales, and we have a variety of terrifying tales and awesome adventures we play every week, Sunday to Friday, at 9 p.m. Eastern. Tomorrow is our season finale for Starfinder. Friday is our Halloween special, A Night at the Sanitarium, in Call of Cthulhu 7th edition, with special guest Travis of Onyx Path. Come check it out on our channel. After Chapter 1 of our Conan story completes this Sunday... Uh, you can catch us playing Terrifying Tales of Cosmic Horror on Sundays. This coming Monday is our Frostlands of Fenrilic one-shot right here on this channel to support the new product, which you should also check out. It's a supplement for the Scarred Lands designed specifically for players to add on to and modify a continent just for us. And then uh, Tuesday is our Chronicle of Darkness, again on this channel, and Wednesday will be our holiday season show. How the Pirate Stole you time, Yule Time is a bug player. Be a good dog. Thursdays are our Stories of Sin. Playing Cult Divinity Lost on Fridays, Dungeon of the Mad Mage, and D&D. Last but not least, we are participating in this year's Extra Life Game Day on the 7th of November. 24 hours straight of games and live plays starting at 10 a.m. Speaking of Onyx Path Publishing, special thanks to them tonight for always having their players' backs and all the support they give us and for making yet another awesome game supplement. Thanks to Astral Tabletop, who make the virtual tabletop we use for all of our games but one. And to my brother at N number 8 mid for crafting the custom sheets we and you can use to play all the Onyx games on Astral. You can find us on almost all social media platforms by looking up Warple Tales. Check us out on YouTube and Twitch. Give us a follow. And coming soon, all your favorite podcast platforms. You can also visit our website, warpletales.com, with links to all of us, including our Discord, so you can hang out, and our Patreon, if so inclined. Come check us out. Night Horrors, tell everyone who you are and the name of your character for this final install. Hello, uh, I am Steve. Um, you can find me on the internet at Voodoo Arcade, and tonight I'm playing uh, Aldous, the old, almost dead necromancer doesn't believe nothing nobody says. Nice. He doesn't believe nothing nobody says. Right, that's what he I said. He believes some things. Exactly. Hi, everybody. I'm Ever. My pronouns are they, them. And tonight, I will be playing Cassandra, a.k.a. Cass Markopoulos, the reluctant medium who is getting blamed for everything and is currently possessed... Sounds right. Hello, my name's uh, Louis Acosta. You can find me on Twitter at Louis and Acostas. Uh, I'm going to be playing Lupe tonight. Uh, there's a chance we get to the the real story behind this house by the end of the night, but I'd be betting on the chance that we won't make it out with our lives. Hey everybody, I'm Pinky underscore 88 on Twitter. It's tonight's final episode. I will be playing the lovable goofball, paranoid of everything, ghosty. Oh, a ghost just touched my butt. CJ Chris Morrison. And uh, I too am kind of curious about the, the house, but kind of hoping just to leave with my life. And maybe the rat that I stuffed in my pocket earlier. We'll see what happens. All right. By the deafening silence, I assume that it's my turn and the people I counted on a hand. I don't know. Mass hard. Um, I am J3 billion on the interwebs. I will be playing Bradley Tomlinson. Yes, that's my name. Um, and he is a conspiracy theorist who... Uh, Shockingly enough, has been just betrayed by Ever's character. 
Oh lord, that's... Oh no, that's, that's so bad for Bradley. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, what's wrong with Bradley? Um, and yeah, that, that that's going to be him for the night. Okay. Um, for the audience who saw the last session, there was a very intense and awesome role-playing uh, scene at the end where everyone suddenly decided that Everest's character was the supervillain. Uh, for non-player knowledge, when tonight's scenario begins, everything that's happened to them in the house up to this point has been caused by ghosts using either powers created in this new supplement, go check out the Kickstarter, get yourself the manuscript we're using, or powers that exist in Wraith the Oblivion. 100% of this has been legit World of Darkness powers, including the ghosts trying to whisper in their ears and sway their opinions by creating negative emotions against Ever's character. And yes, at least one of you, perhaps more, is partially or fully possessed. Oh, those skin riders. So, you're going to need all of your powers to try to escape this one. As such, uh, Lewis, Black Hack's now at level two. Steven, Necromancy has gone to three. And Tiffany, uh, Starlight has gone to two for you. Your stuff was already maxed out, ever. <laughs> so, let's complete our terrifying tale, Chimera House. Tiffany, recap last session, if you please. Or, since you're not feeling well, I could drop back that back on Lewis. Put him on the spot for his last session. Yeah, make Lewis do it. <laughs> Lewis, Lewis, Lewis. In a room. Lewis. I am entertained. Only three people in this room, but one oddly saying that there's five. Boom! Lights go out. Come back. Big carpet. And so uh, we realize there's friggin' specters, and we're absolutely screwed. Uh, luckily, Aldous. You know, we weren't so sure about his necromancy, but he managed to pull through, although he, he kind of did a bad job. He kind of forgot what color his eyes were. Uh, but he comes through the void and brings Bradley with him. And we were all joined back together. At least until we started realizing there might be a traitor amongst us. Bradley wasn't alone when he died. Yes, there's a traitor among us. So I'll just put Cass on the spot. We discovered that Bradley's memories had been altered. Aldous was covering up his side of the story. But we knew that there were specters that were going to be a much bigger problem. And all we could do was move on. We stepped into a room with a banquet. I have yeah. one question before we move on. Is Ever looking a little sus? Oh, so sus. Is that a player question or a character question? That's a, that's a real life meta joke. Everyone was a little sus, sus by, the, by the time we all sat down. But the most sus of all the sus revealed that we were in a trap. As Cass springs onto the table laughing maniacally. And so we are at this point. And the curtain arises. When last we left you, Ever was crawling across the table, speaking in a strange voice that wasn't their own, and everything was flying about the room, and the lights had gone out, and there were shadows everywhere crawling across the ceiling towards you, and the walls, and up through the floor. Trying to make sure nothing's mm -hmm. like smacking us in the head. 
Wait, you're... Nothing's touching you yet, but they are slowly crawling towards you while I give you a moment to decide what you all want to do. <laughs> well, at this point, if Cass is right, like, in the middle of the table, tackle. Yes. Just... So you're going to tackle Cass? Yeah. Okay. What about you, Brad? Uh, Bradley is going to get up and take his chair <laughs> and try and keep these bugs off of him. <laughs> he, he is going to just like start like smashing the ground and sweeping away as many bugs as he they're can. They're not bugs, they're spirits. Oh, spirits. They're ghosts um, crawling out of the walls, the floor, and the ceiling. I mean, you could try to hit them with a chair. No, so, for player work. knowledge, you have two paths here. The thing that's inside of Ever is at full strength, and it's obvious it's because all of the spirits in the house are in concert with this thing. If you're going to win, you either have to get them on your side or you have to banish them, destroy or aid. There's no third choice. If you try to do this on your own, you'll die. You'll never make it out of the house. You will join the cast of ghosts. Carry on back in character. I mean, it doesn't sound that bad. What are you afraid of, my friends? <laughs> this is what you thought would happen, right? This is what you thought was going on. Uh, I'm going to take out... thought can... was going on. Yeah. Can do what, Brad? <laughs> I'm going to take out a communication... or, or uh, I'm going to take out a device that looks like oddly, uh, like almost like a Pringles can. It's just oblong and it has these little feet on each side of it. And I'm going to set it down. And what it's going to do is it's going to allow uh, any other spirits in here to manifest themselves and to uh, try and communicate, hopefully, to us. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just doing things. I'm I'm helping. All this, what are you gonna do? That's an action. Not really initiative yet, but we may be. Um. Also, can I make some sort of occult knowledge uh, roll to kind of know the process that we would need to take to? separate the power between the spirits and whatever the hell is going on with Cass? Because you said that they're working in concert, so you said we either have to aid or destroy like, occult-wise. Using the abilities you all have. Well, We've only really seen all this throw down with his powers, but you all have. You all have something that can either help spirits or hurt or terrify them. All this, you're aware of what you've got. Up till now, you've got scared them away and then, uh, see them see them and then now you have third level power which actually forces them to manifest and you and can punch them yes i can i can physically bring them into the world now um black hack we had one dot which would allow lewis to basically uh it's called ddos it lets him manifest so much of himself into the room the ghost can't manifest an overload of human data so spirits can't be there it cleanses the room at level two lewis now has uh doc's attack you can tell everyone what that does. Or if you don't have a quick idea. Why don't you go for it? Uh, okay. Just messed up. Uh, he can now dox a ghost, which means he can force information out of it. He can learn how it died, why it died, and what its true name is, and why it's still here if it has fetters. Very useful. Uh, John has maxed out five dots of ghost equipment. He's using one of his high-level ones. He can help you directly speak to spirits. He can also throw out ghost traps. And he has another handy high-level power that allows him to... Where did John go? Full conversation. Uh... Oh, he can do a cool device that creates static interference in the air. It shoots out particles of static into the air that actually allow the ghost to manifest. He can give them enough ambient energy in the room to create to create physical form even if they don't have that power mm -hmm. tiffany at level one of starlight uh chris had the ability to uh enter the shadowlands 
or let anything or anyone else enter the Shadowlands through any doorway. Select that door, that goes to Ghost Realms now. And now at level 2, Chris can find his courage, finally. Or give courage to you. Massive amounts of it. Like the courage stat. Okay. Also, you have the ability to ritual, so yes, I will let you do an occult roll when we get back to you. You may think of a ritual of helpfulness that isn't specific to your dot lib numbers. Okay. And then Ever has a lot of medium powers, some of which are going to come in handy here momentarily. Ever! What would Ever like to do to try to free themselves from this, at least temporarily, if not permanently? Oh, dang. Um, hmm. Here's a hint. Look at your background. The only one you bought. Specific enough. I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm gonna call him my <laughs> ancestor. So both Ever and Tiffany have ancestor. Ever's is me or Tiffany's is medium range. Ever's is full power. Uh, at full power, ancestor actually lets Ever's uh, predecessor that looks after her could show up in the room and do all kinds of shit, including healing, aggravated damage, forcing out spirits, God knows what else. If Ever could push through possession enough to do it highly useful. Of course, once it manifests and does its thing, it's very exhausting and not useful again for a while. At the mid-level that Chris has, uh, you can get useful advice from it and minor things, which will also come in useful. Uh, the right background is what we're going to be pulling on for you when you do your occult rolls to see if you know any cool rituals. Okay. That's what that that's, should say, rituals. Okay. I mean, the rights, the... yeah. Right. So. Chris, what are you going to do when you get an action? Uh... I was actually thinking about opening... Starlight. And getting everyone, the whole party, in there. If you take the party through a doorway, you'll take them to the Shadowlands, where the dead are. You'll physically take yourselves to the underworld. What you could do, it'll get you out of the house. Doesn't mean you're getting back to the real world, though. No. Rad. Yeah, that's true. For you, Starlight in this instance will be less about that and more about when your party decides which approach they're going to take. Attack or aid they can try to free the spirits trapped here by giving them a way out should they take it not all spirits are fettered uh, under their own free will using ghost time and right the oblivion they're all staying because they have unfinished business ghost hunters some of them would like to move on but can't mm -hmm. Come back to me. I'm thinking. <laughs> okay. We're going to go back to Lupe. Lupe, make a courage roll. In this room, with what is happening, everything you all do except forever is at minus three. Every success you make on this courage roll removes one point to penalty. Or plus three, not minus three. So uh, your default difficulty is nine, except for your courage roll results. So starting with Lupe, give me courage. The default, uh, the difficulty is nine. Six. The courage roll difficulty is six. Your action rolls are nine minus successes on this roll. And it is a courage roll as well? Just courage. Nothing else. Yep. Use your willpower. Yeah, yeah. I'm just in the bolt character. Yes, yeah, so you can use willpower to get an, a one automatic success on the courage roll, but also remember, almost every one of you has to power your supernatural abilities with willpower. Only Aldous can kill himself to do it. Literally. <laughs> Well, All right, uh, what'd you get? You got... Uh, that seems like a lot of... Work. That's too, That's physically impossible. Somebody I, must be checked, yes. I got three <laughs> critical successes? 
Let's see, where are you? I thought I could dice. Which doesn't seem right. Okay. Lupe. The manip manipulation got checked. Ah, off. okay. But Go ahead, do it again. Too many stats. Oof. Oh, good thing I spent the little power. Oof. Yes. Your difficulties are at eight. Uh, Chris, go ahead and do the same thing. Make sure only courage is checked when you roll. I'm rolling courage? Yep, you're all going to. I'm just going in my uh, zoom oh. order. Yeah. Oh, this is not going to go well for me. <laughs> I have faith. Because you got to have faith. You're the... Uh, I have faith it's not going to go well for me. Okay, I mean, like, doesn't say faith in what? One? Hey. Wait, I, did, I think I did the difficulty wrong. What was it again? Sure you six. did, but I can still figure it out. You yeah. still only got the one it's success. One. Your difficulties are eight. Okay. And, uh, Bradley. Courage. And remember, until you all find a way to get more courage, you are all terrified when you're role-playing this Well, two of you are, anyways. We'll see what happens with the last two. <laughs> all right, John. No, I don't see you roll yet. Alright, I'm spending a little a one not one of willpowers as well. And I'm rolling courage. Hopefully it works this time. One success. Did it actually do a thing? It didn't spend the willpower, no. If you oh. still want to spend it, that would be two. Yep, I said it. So your DCs are seven. You are terribly frightened, but not terrified. And Aldous! Boom! That is three successes. Nice. You're totally not possessed, and that's totally not why you're perfectly fine. Awesome. I appreciate that. Okay. Let's start with the tackle. That sounds like a good place to start. <laughs> All right, Lupe. Do a flying tackle of the possessed girl. Give me a uh, strength plus brawl roll. But before you roll it, let's see what your target number is. From an evil spirit. It's not one to check. And my difficulty is at eight now. Yes. Little oh. power. Oh, okay. You're rolling against difficulty. <laughs> So this, this roll would not be difficult to eight normally because your target number is what I resist with, but it's eight because that's what I rolled. Let, let's see if I can pull an Aldus and, and scrap my way through this. One success from willpower. <laughs> okay. Ever. Please roll. Opposing role. Athletics plus strength plus four. Difficulty six. Um, some crit misses. Someone. Wait, what's your default strength? Default strength is two. Yeah, plus four. Your strength is currently six in possessed form. Oh, snap. I have zero athletics, by the way. So it's just six dice. He might actually tackle you. <laughs> but your difficulty is lower, so we'll see. Whoa! How? Or not. How? I feel like... Uh... <laughs> wait, wait, that's that's a lot of dice. They that, just rolled a yeah. ton of successes. Oh, shit. Okay, I had a cult. No, that's too many dice. I had, oh. I had a cult. I had a cult. <laughs> Roll like, again. I'm sorry. And wits. What the... That wasldn't clicked a second ago, I swear. My <laughs> shit's haunted! Goddamn, my shit's haunted! Goddamn ghosts! Tonight. 
Five <laughs> still beats <laughs> Lewis, yes. All right, Lupe. You fling yourself oh, onto the table, and ever does the do the evil laugh, please. <laughs> it just throws you against the wall on the other side of the room. You take one bashing damage and slide to the ground, stunned slightly. Who are you gonna say, Brett or CJ? I, I was gonna say, can can CJ try to assist Lupe? Nope. <laughs> That's done and okay. gone. Playing so rough, Lupe. <laughs> Should I be rough back? I'll say no. No, no. Oh. All this. Uh, make that a cult roll. Make that Difficulty a cult six. roll. Okay, here we go. Plus two. A little voice in your head might be helpful here. One second. I'm going to bring it out in public this time instead of in the side chat for you all. This would be more entertaining and less work for both of us. Sure. Hey, what are we trying to figure out? We're still getting out of here, right? Yeah, fuck this house. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure out is how to get the fuck out of here. Uh, well, obviously the answer is not what that guy just did. He's dumb. What, you mean blindly tackling a possessed person? You don't person? tackle demons. No. It's you not don't... a ghost. It's a fucking demon. Wait, those are real? Yes. Oh, uh, ignore that willpower. Um, okay. But, uh, two, four, six, seven, eight, but I might, yeah, still, still, still a result of seven on my occult roll. Okay. And that's actually not even so, including the bonus two you gave me. Could technically be more. Uh, yeah, demons are real. This is one of the nasty ones, too. The ones that are stuck here, and then, like spread themselves down through humans by attaching them to their souls. There's a weird word for it. Bitter slaint? I don't know how to say it. Uh, it's not good. Okay. How do I get... Okay, so... Shut up. Shut up. Just... You know, <clears throat> quiet. Quiet, you. Tell me how to get it out of there. Tell me how to get it out of her. Well, you guys can't do it alone. You have to get the ghost to help you. What do they want? What do they want? Same thing I fucking want. Fuck this house. <sighs> Shit. All right, so hold on. All right, so okay, hold on. Okay, so we can do that ritual. You could, ritual. you could let them all in. Five of us would be enough. So you're saying, bring all of you into us, and then. Oh yeah, that would totally work. Quiet, snicker. Hold on, I'm still going to try to. <laughs> oh wait, no, I'm sorry. Three. I see that guy over there has already got one. Huh? Looks at Brad. We'll come back to that. <laughs> okay. None of you can hear this, by the way. This is character knowledge for everyone except Steve. You're this is an internal monologue. All right. So yes, with... Brad is also partially possessed. How do you think he got out of the ward? I did that. Yeah, you totally did that. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's fine, but I still need the ritual. I still need to know what ritual we're doing. Oh, uh... Holy exorcism? You could just cut its throat. I, no host, no ghost. Look, I can't do a holy exorcism. I don't have three girthy candles. Cut her throat. You don't care about her. I feel like that might be crossing a line. Right, yeah, I was this literally going to do it. I don't like that. Girthiest of candles. All right, fine. I'll do what I can. You do what you can. Get your friends. Right, Go fine. get your friends. Just like, just like. So you're gonna need blood Done. from one of your ancestors. Still got that knife. And you're gonna need. Don't ask me how that works. It just does. Let's go shit. Okay, just, just no, go. With no, it. I wasn't even questioning it. And then you're gonna need some blood from a willing innocent or a virgin. Looks around the room. Willing innocent. The other one's not happening. <laughs> look at <laughs> look at Lewis the tech nerd. Nah, not enough. Mm, all right. We're sure, we're turn, sure turn though about the head, we're sure about the second your head one though. Towards Chris. Towards Chris. Oh, yes. Okay. Um. Sometimes it is. It just means naive redneck. Don't ask. <laughs> uh good thing Chris can't hear this. <laughs> Third ingredient you're gonna need is good luck with this one. The ashes of a ghost, respect her. 
All right, fine, fine. Uh, so I'll take that and I'll yell out. Everyone, I've got an idea, but you've got to play along. You've got to make yourself open to certain things coming to you. Clear your mind. Clear your clear clear clear. Just yes, clear your head. yes. Clear your mind. Says so you. Says so the skeptic. Clear your mind. Definitely. We're obviously clear your past mind. the point of skepticism. This shit's real. My goal was only to ever see if something's real, and it is. Okay. What, what Everyone looks at every character who's board? floating over the table like a foot. <laughs> we have to. So. Well, just, what are you up to? Where'd you get this information? It's called books. You should try reading. Here them. with the class. Oh, is it? You looked like you were concentrating. <laughs> I look yeah. around. I am just trying not to piss myself because I know I. Uh, we had a, we had a, um, <laughs> I'm not crying, I swear. We had a, uh, the, t the table had, uh, like, food and stuff on it, right? Yes, which is now all turned rotten and moldy and that, That's fine. Did it have place settings? Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Yep, yep. Okay, I'm gonna grab a knife. Oh, what are you going Should to do with that? Are you going to stab me? Oh, do it. Do it. Oh, yes. Stab your friend. Yes, do it. So I grab the knife, and for one second I do contemplate stabbing them. Real silver. <laughs> hmm. With it's... a silver butter knife. It's, is this sharp at all? Go ahead, then I can take over I... another one. Yeah, because <laughs> these are like gothic place settings and everything is sharp. It's okay. Good. But then I turn to Chris, and I'm like, Chris, I need you to trust me. Yes, trust him, Chris. Trust him, Chris. Trust what, him, you Chris. I, I show Chris the knife. I just need your hand and nothing else. I'm flattered, but I ain't gonna marry you. Okay. Rude. <laughs> but I need... It's a blood sacrifice. What? You ain't sacrificing me? Yes, just, kill him, kill him! Just the blood, not your life. Not a life sacrifice. Please. He lies. I need your hand. Oh, he's being nice. Has he ever been nice to you before? There's something amiss. Oh, shoot. I, I look at my own hand. Which remember, I actually, uh, I talked specifically, uh, my, I was like, you know, I had to use my own blood for the ritual with Bradley from before. And I look, so I look at my own hand where I was bleeding from before. That's just how this works. Messy jagged. But my blood's not gonna. If I die all this, I'm hot on your ass. Just want you to know. That's perfectly fine. Yes, you can join me. <laughs> Chris, please. He, he oh, he said please. Does he say pretty please? Over. Does he say pretty please? They're making it really hard. <laughs> They're making it really hard not to stab them right now. Wound. <laughs> All right. I wouldn't fault you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Chris. So, Chris hands over his left hand to Aldis. And I'll go to make the swipe across Chris's hand to get the innocent blood. <laughs> okay. One lethal damage, Chris, on your track. It's deep cut. Yeah. Oh, I can't feel my fingers. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't trickle out, the blood falls out. And I assume that's pretty much all I can do on this turn. He knows not to hit. It looks delicious. Yes. Can I lick it, Chris? Alright, Brad, go ahead and give me a uh, technology roll plus uh, hey. wits. Technology plus wits, got it. Difficult. What? Where is technology on the list? I can't find it. The seven for you. That's a skill. Computers? Nope, should be the last one in the skill row. Computers and knowledge. 
Uh, survival, stealth, security, performance, melee. There is no technology for me. Uh, she does not have technology. I do not believe so. I mean, can I roll with my... S because they are my special tools, can I just roll my paranormal tools with dice? Yes. It's plus that. And difficulty seven, you said? Correct. All right. Hopefully I won't need it. Uh, make sure courage is unchecked. And here we go. Five successes. That is a critical success. What were you trying to do with the device? Be able to communicate? Um... Yes, I was hoping to find a friendly spirit that was willing to communicate, maybe manifest itself and help us. As soon as you flick it on, a cacophony of screams and wails comes pouring out of it and deafens the room. So much agony and despair. Oh, fun. This room is full of spirits. Um, I guess I don't really know what to do from here. And then, uh, the voices are positional, so if you talk, they will talk from where, if they will respond from wherever they're at. Right in your ear, Bradley. We fill the skies around you. Remember, right there. Remember your powers. Your powers. I don't have any. Oh, is this, that, this is his power. Yeah, this, He's oh, the oh. tech guy. It, yeah, sorry. I don't. I literally only have my tech. That, that, I don't have anything. But his oh. tech does many cool things, including traffic ghosts and making them manifest. Okay. How? But he started with the device that allows communication. Okay, okay. Like, how How can I help you? How can we end this? This doesn't seem like a happy place to be or any, any place that I'd ever want to be. I can't imagine that it's... Oh, Bradley, this any, is any the closer place to the, I am not talking to whoever you are. I don't know. The spirits try to answer, but... When whatever's inside of Ever talks, they scream in pain. The connection is obvious. <laughs> oh, you are a fantastic whatever you are. Wow, that's fucking horrible. Um, I mean, is there any way for me to use my technology to get some help here, or is this just it? Like, like I said, I you're still with the same thing we said at the beginning. You're going to have to agree as a group to free the spirits or kill them. Those free. are your options. I'm, yeah, I think everybody's on board for free. Then, yeah, you're, you can force them to physically manifest, and then Bradley or Chris can open one of his gates to the underworld and you can just tell them run, run for your lives. Hopefully they have more power than the demon when the gates open. That's one choice. The other choice is maybe they can overpower her bond if the thing inside of her is a her is uh, when they're manifest. Maybe they can break control. But well, that would be That's an Aldous just... thing. Correct. No, he, Aldous can't force them to man. Well, Aldous might be able to force them to manifest, but you can too. It's specifically listed in your tech. Right in my fourth, fourth tech. So I guess uh, for my next trick, that I'll do exactly that. I'll try and that manifest. That's going to take you a few turns to set up, as much as it's going to take all this a few turns to force them to manifest. So that means you two can work together. Once the ever demon figures that out, they're coming for you. So the other two are going to have to be able to worry about that. Oh, this is absolutely fantastic! And you are a piece of work. You realize what those screams are? This is not okay. I realize exactly what those screams are. I made them happen. <laughs> yeah, okay. I... Bradley, are you scared? Are you scared, Bradley? No, are I'm pissed. Scared? I am angry as fuck right now. And you know what I would like to say? You know, besides your best attempts, I didn't fucking turn on her. And I'm quite proud of that. Oh, but you started to question. I heard you. Oh, everyone questions. Everyone questions was right in front of their face. Mm. Oh, you know, I, uh, you know mm. what would end all of this if you just, if you just killed her. 
Oh, yeah. Then you'd be rid of her, and, and you wouldn't have and, to and worry what else would about happen? a traitor. Oh, so Bradley. I wouldn't have to worry about it. Mm. This thing is pissing you off. You feel like if you just let some of that rage in, you'd have a lot more power. I'm fine with that. I'm not. I'll. Okay. Keep your mind open to anything that wants in. Bradley's eyes change color to that vivid green you see in all this. Is. Bradley, in your head. Hey, Chief. Yeah. Let's punch this bitch. Come on. Let's go. <laughs> You're now at the same possession level as, uh,. Aldous, you let it in. Oh, what pretty <laughs> okay. eyes you have, Bradley. Who's your new roommate? You like him? You want? You're gonna get a t you're gonna get a look at him. Are you gonna <laughs> keep go? You're gonna keep going with the spirit's ideas? Yeah, I mean, well, I'm not going. Bradley is no longer assisting you because he picks up the spirit communicator and swings at it every day. Well, didn't want to hurt at hurt. Yes. That's what it wants you to do. I wanted to help. You can resist the, if you want. I wanted but to you help. You will the, need a willpower check. Difficulty eight. I wanted to help the ritual. I didn't want to hurt Cass. And I think, well, Bradley wanted that. No, wait, no. I apologize. You reach for your device. But it's not there. So you grab a plate instead, like a serving plate. <laughs> Quang! That's what's gonna happen. You can try to resist, but you're gonna have to make a willpower roll. Difficulty eight. You will need three successes. Three successes. Willpower eight. All right. And you cannot spend willpower on a willpower. All right, so we're looking at eight dice. Can I just you can get three out of it? Difficulty seven. Can I just click on them? No, I have to roll the dice by hand. Yeah. Four. Eight d ten, and anything over anything seven or over. All right, I'm just gonna do this. That you said difficulty eight. Counts. No, seven. Seven, excuse me. Eight dice for you. Eight you dice. A lot of... All right, there it goes. Uh, eight successes. Yeah, eight dice, eight successes. Willpower. Correct. So you don't have to kerrang her, but you do have to do something angry because you let the anger in. It'll be your next turn, but you can decide what that's going to be. In other words, anything cool, calm, and calculated will be nearly impossible. Temper, temper. So, like, using technology, difficulty 10. Formulating a collective calm plan, difficulty 10. Break shit, difficulty 5. <laughs> Break shit, difficulty 5. All right. <laughs> so I, succe I, I successfully kept my consciousness, but I'm being pointed at No, in you're possessed. You successfully prevented yourself from wailing on ever for right. one turn. For one turn. What you want to do with that next turn, so we know. Right now, um, I think I'm. I think I'm gonna try and, with the smallest semblance of control I have. Not go I'm going to try and do non-lethal damage. You're gonna try. You're gonna try the flying tackle. Okay. I'm gonna so, try and knock her out, or not Chris, cast out. Chris, seeing all this happening, what do you want to do with your action? You're scared, but you can still do something. Well, I got my hand cut up pretty bad because of all this, right? Yep, but that's not gonna continue getting worse. You've got it wrapped up. So, is, was that like my part in helping his ritual or whatever? Yeah, you can't you can't aid necromancy unless you have necromancy. Okay, which I don't. And he wants me to open my mind. That's what he said. <laughs> looking at half the ha looking at the half the party possessed, you're like, I don't know if I want to do that. I really don't. Just you and Lupe not possessed with weird eyes. Little Chris, little Chris, let me come in. Then again, Bradley doesn't look scared no more. I don't want to be scared no more. You have an anti-scared superpower. I do have an anti-scared superpower. Can I talk to Meemaw? And maybe she can help me what to do. 
You can, but that's not your anti-scared superpower. Your anti-scared superpower is your starlight increased to two dots. I can talk yes. to Mima for you. Mima says, "Hello, Chris." You're gonna trust a per you're gonna trust someone. Jokes to try on you, Mima didn't call me Chris. She called me dipshit. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Can it, can it, can you just be doing the double birds as you say it? Just be like, <laughs> she called me dipshit. <laughs> oh my god, that was great. Fuck yeah, it was. <laughs> oh my face hurts. So, yes, you could try to contact Grandma or activate the Courage Power, which are... Uh, if I free my mind, so to speak, would I still have access to, to my Courage? Like, Starlight? Or I'd have to fight against it, wouldn't I? You don't even know what he means when he's just <laughs> open your mind. You know, like, fuck to, it. To your character, that's the thing people say. That, what does that mean? Yeah, that's why Mimo call me dipshit. I don't know the so. combination of that and <laughs> you're not the meditating type. You're too emotional to focus and meditate. But yes, you could still try to open your mind too, which is nasty. You know what? I'm I'm gonna go ahead and do that because as grumpy and mean as all this is to Chris all the time. He does look up to the guy and is gonna trust him. To roll uh, stamina. Okay. Plus That's expression. It? Plus okay. expression. Difficulty oh, eight because you're still shit. scared. This is not gonna. This is not gonna go well at all. Oh shit, nope, I clicked courage on accident. Ignore that. Okay. Let me try that again. Okay, stamina and expression. Make sure nothing else is clicked. Alright, here we go. Did it go through? Not yet. Mother trucker. <laughs> this is why me and don't try love again. me. I can't do stuff uh, like that. Try using uh, the number on your keyboard, number one. That might It might think you're double clicking. There it goes. You are unable to open your mind, which is good because you're not possessed. Yay! Wait, that means I'm dumb. Back to Lupe. <laughs> Lupe. So in this scene, Ever's on the table, laughing and gyrating around. Aldous is in the corner, like, sawing through his hand and through Bradley's hand, muttering <laughs> shit to himself. Uh, Brad's over there, like, smashing furniture and flying through the air, like, all of his neck pulls, his veins are bulging out. And then Lupe's in the corner hugging uh, Brad's technology with like his eyes are bugging out of his head and he's all pale and sweating and then you got uh, Chris in the corner going oh I'm so fucking scared oh I'm so fucking scared <laughs> that's what's happening right now <laughs> so Lupe back to you I crank all the dials up on the device okay everyone shut the fuck up and I try to uh DDoS the room and just hopefully wipe out some of the spiritual activity. Your difficulty is going to be eight because you're fighting uh, the demon's uh, influence, but it will be the same. Oh, I'm sorry, seven. It's plus two. Difficulty is five by default, so it's seven in this scenario. So it's manipulation plus computer and spend a willpower whether you succeed or not. It should be five then because I have the computer aptitude, which. That won't help in this case. For this particular instance. Because you have no idea how Brad's equipment works. 
Fair enough. Well, Brad knows how that shit works. Don't break it, Lupe. <laughs> I'm over there. Hit the goddamn on button. There's like 50 buttons. <laughs> did you did you turn it off and on again? Did you make sure Brad it says, was plugged in? Brad says, hit the tiny button. There's a tiny button and a big button that says tiny. And you're like, fuck. <laughs> but I press both of them with my six successes. Is it oh, plugged in? Six, you say. Plus willpower, so seven? Depends. If you added the willpower on the sheet, it automatically adds an index roll. It, uh, it added it. Uh, it doesn't look like yeah, it. Yeah, did it. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah well, you got five from the roll it counted. It. You got a ten and three regular successes. Lewis just got six successes on four dice, y'all. Okay. <laughs> like Compared to where I started. <laughs> Uh, yeah. All the spirits in the room that aren't currently possessing people are temporarily banished from the room. All of the shadows are gone. Also, who's got it weakens. Button. Also, it weakens the demon for a brief second. Ever willpower roll. Difficulty eight. <sighs> and no bonus dice. Uncheck things because last time. <laughs> then... Uh. You can't check it, so you just do it all as bonus dice, or just click the D10 and change it to however much your willpower is. It, in the little formula that pops up. It let it let me click the word willpower actually. Oh, I did do it. Updates. Three? Nice. Three successes is, in fact, a complete success. So for this turn, you've ejected the demon. You can roleplay what that's like. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh. <coughs> Black smoke actually pours out of Ever's eyes and nose. Uh, it coalesces in the corner of the room. I'm just standing there with two bloody knives. It's not like just black colored smoke, it's like soot. It's got texture to it, it's heavy. What? What? Oh, my scarf. What is? I don't feel Gross. so good. And then Bradley hits you with the flying tackle. <laughs> Bradley, we're all brawl plus strength. Oh god. <laughs> I mean, difficulty. I mean, come on. That's perfect. Six. You that were in the middle so of perfect. I'm gonna die. I mean, okay. I didn't. To be fair, I was specifically difficulty. trying not. But you're just trying to restrain her, yeah. Difficulty eight or different difficulty. For Bradley, it's strength plus brawl, difficulty six. Oh. For you, uh, ever, it's athletics oh. plus strength, difficulty seven, because you just... Well, okay, unless the ghost oh, gives God. me anything, then this is going to be really bad anyway. He's got unpossessed. Yeah, you're both bad at this. Uh, you difficulty eight? Like Chris isn't it? the one tackling no. you. Eight, six, you said? Six, six for you, Brad. Six. Okay. I have one dice, by the way. He's he's outright gonna kill me though, like a bit. I, I, I no, have Chris one would dice. kill you if he tackled you. Brad Trust can't me. do enough damage to kill you. I can't Brad can't do shit. You <laughs> Hold on, I need to You had something checked because it rolled eight dice for Yeah, Brad. I need to do something. I, I got I got I'm zero. Sure. So <laughs> Yep, you got zero. So uh either way. You could get zero too. And then he'll just like All miss right, me. And... No, you'll just fall in a heap on the floor and make no progress. Unless he botches and then be oh, better. God. Nope. Yeah. 
Bradley goes flying across the table going, ah! And Cass goes, ah! And they get all tangled up in each other and fall off the table covered in rock food. Oh! Maggots oh, in your hair. Oh, so gross! I mean, Chris oh. goes to help pick Cass Wait, up. hold on. Who are you? Wait, you're not creepy. You're Cass. Excellent. I'm so confused. I thought you were Cass. I well, I am. Don't have but much time. I don't. I'm. What? How? What are we? What? I'm pretty sure that one of the other people did a thing, and yeah, let's just roll with it. We need to deal with whatever the fuck that is over there, and I'm pointing to the gray goop. I'm, I'm covered in rotten food. Not that that thing hmm? made a home out of your mind. Just a second ago. I mean, we're, we got to deal I with remember, that. I remember being taken over when I started the seance, but yes, everything else is kind of a blur. Um, it didn't. It hasn't ended yet. And that thing used you like a puppet. Oh. I, I, I hate to say it. I dirty. I don't want to. I, yeah, I don't want to say it as bluntly as this right now. We got to fucking deal with it. Okay, no, I, 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 oh. Sorry, I I'm sorry. So let's, so let's do it. Come I, on. uh, okay. What uh, do you need, all this? Kind of not even acknowledging cast considering what's happened up to now. And the fact that they're obviously in some distress at the moment, just kind of ignoring. Just like, look, here's where we're at. Okay. The ghosts in here don't want to be here. Some of them want to get out, and they're willing to help us, but you've got to open your mind to them, okay? If we can separate the demon from the ghost, we can lower its power. Yeah, demon. Apparently demons are real now. Who knew? Uh, what? That's what was that inside was Cass. Demon? This isn't a haunted house. This is a fucking hell house. What oh. if we took the demon out? Right, which means it's running around somewhere planning its next move. I'm, I'm gonna call on my, my ancestor. Probably a good idea. We're gonna By Aldous, you can pause your thing and carry it on when there's more spirits to manifest. Okay, so just to make sure I understand correctly, we want to get the... So my ritual is to bring the spirits... You don't have to start over. Your ritual and John's tool, or Brad's tool, essentially accomplish the same goal, so you could help each other if you can get rid of the rage. They will be able to physically manifest even if they don't have that power innately. That's a high level raise power. Okay. Which at that point, at that point, you could punch them to death or burn them down or whatever. Oh right, because I need the and, ashes. Of a and or you could have. That could also mean the physical ashes of a dead person, but uh, that is a ghost still. Or once they physically manifest, you could get Chris to open a starlight gate and they could run and escape the house. Fight or flight, we gotta fucking choose. Yeah, so I fill them in on what my ritual can do, essentially. I can help with that. Okay. All right. So, if we can get the ghosts here, how do we get them out? The starlight portal? CJ, can you do that? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I can do it. So if we can promise the ghost an exit out of this house, they'll turn on the demon. That has him trapped here. Wouldn't it be better to just get these ghosts out of here before we deal with the demon so the demon doesn't have, like, can't okay. use them? So we... Okay. Right. This, the star, uh, this sends them to the... Okay. Yeah, if we can open the portal and get a, enough of the ghosts out of here, it's going to lower the demon's powers and we can... Do whatever the hell you do with demons. I don't know. Throw the holy water <laughs> at them and do a backflip. I don't know. Sick. Uh, I'm as flip. lost as a sick kick I'm flip. as lost as you guys are. Does our our supernatural, uh, let's say, visitors have any other ideas? Cass, like, how do we beat this thing once everybody else is gone? Cass, what's your 
I don't know what your uh, great aunts say. Uh, I, I have, to, I have to call on her. Out of character, Tyler. How would you like me to go about doing that? And actually, you could just do it with the background, either one of you. Especially now that the room is clear and you're not terrified anymore. However, I don't know, Cass is kind of terrified. <laughs> however, uh, yours. Uh, is more potent. So, you can either use the more potent one first or the less potent one first. It's up to you guys. Or do both and see what happens. It's completely up to you. Uh, probably should save the more potent for when the demon's actually around again. In that case, what do you think? You, in that case, you can just ask for advice. That you can do whenever. If you want the if you want the antecessor to actually appear and do something physical, then yeah, you could you could hold off on yours and have Chris use his. Chris, I yours would, is high I enough would. of a power level, by the way, to do things like bring ghost ashes to all this if you wanted her to. I could. What did you want to do, uh, Cass? Just ask a question. Yeah, just uh, uh, call on cousin Althea to ask her questions. Okay. Or a question. So, Chris, you want to bring the ashes to Aldous? Yes. Okay. So what that means is you've used the superpower of yours for this scenario. It can still heal you and give you a brief sentence, one word advice, but that's it. However, you can go ahead and roleplay that, and then we'll roleplay casts. However you want it to look when ghost ashes magically appear. You are I'm, I'm gonna go talk to my mom. I feel like she can do something here. Just, just give me a second. Just, just g give me a second. So, like, you kind of see Chris just standing there, and uh, he's kind of like trying to shake himself loose. And then you kind of like see him stand rigid, and his eyes kind of glaze over for a second. And then all of a sudden, you just hear him having like this one-sided conversation and he's he's yelling like not yelling but like arguing and um we're uh having a you can't hear the other half but you can very clearly tell whoever he's talking to is scolding him for some reason um and then he just kind of like just rolls his eyes stands there he's still getting frustrated and he continues on and starts asking if she can be able to help him. And then he just kind of goes quiet. He puts his hands out and this small little ashtray shows up. And then you see like uh, the thin transparent shape of a cigarette and smoke kind of blowing from the top. And then the whole tray just fills with what looks like cigarette ash, but it's actually ghost ashes. That's what Chris hands you, all this. I kind of all take right, it, not respecting the gravity of the situation, because Aldous and be like, this will work, thanks. <laughs> Me more, so right, she Cass. can go kick my ass if I drop the ass, Troy. <laughs> Just like, old man, like, eh, eh. <laughs> <laughs> dump, dump, fling. <laughs> Your meemaw said what? Crash. Sorry. <laughs> Alright, yes. That's why I'm cold little dipshit. <laughs> um. Okay, now I feel so, so bad. <laughs> Cass is going to go ahead and pull out uh, a cone of incense instead of the stick, and it's in this little sensor that she has. And, uh, it's got Greek lettering all around it, so that when she lights it, the smoke falls out of the Greek lettering. Before Cass flows. even has time to do anything else, you all hear the Greekest of accents. Man, you fucked now, cuz. What? Look what you no, did. Done I got didn't... possessed by demons. Now, that wasn't my fault. If you'd stayed in the homeland, none of this would have happened. It's America. It's America doing this to you. 
Oh, oh yes, because America is just demons Especially and possession. That one. that one with the American accents the worst. They Dude, they all have to Chris. Southern. I ain't that by you. <laughs> now now look, CJ is a perfectly fine young man. Just very pink. Pretty sure a minute ago they were all gonna kill you or some shit. Especially oh, the oh, old yeah. fuck. Yeah, they 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 were. I take offense to that. Yeah, I'll be you. Not so much against him though. That that seems. Hey, fine. I'd like to. Yeah, I'm with him. I'd like to have you know that while while I had doubts, I you know what? No, I you know thinking back, I didn't even really have doubts. It's just that fucker played with my memories. I was always. Female laughter, on your, derisive maybe. laughter. On your side. Digging into the ashes and kind of like trying to get like my fingertips nice and coated really and everything. Bad. I'll just kind of look up. No, I'm still not convinced that they're not part of this. God damn it, all this. <laughs> I could take care of him for you, cuz. I, I mean. I, I could go see uh, our uncle, you know, that uncle. Well. He, he knows people in America. Uh, I'm neither going to agree to that nor disagree. Um, <laughs> well, she actually says, first. she actually oh. says, ghost wink. <laughs> says it. <laughs> ghost wink. I love it. Cousin, how do we, how do we get rid of this entity? First, you gotta get the ghost out of the house or break them free of its control. And then, uh, I recommend you let it run. Maybe burn it. If it'll burn, I don't know. How do you not know? You're dead. You know everything now, right? It seeped itself into the bones of the house. There's no exercise oh. in this. You could weaken it, you could escape, you could damage the house. H how do we, how do we get out? Also, it wants you. It wants you here because it's you. Apparently, it knew your boss and its last host. You know the one who disappeared. Oh. It's toying Did with you. Just burn this fucking place, up, girl. Oh. If it'll burn. Do we? Uh, uh, how, how do we? How do we weaken it to get out? Aside from letting the ghost out, is there anything? The thing skin riding the old man told him it's a trick that'll help. I knew it. Huh? I can take care of that if you want me to. Um, if it's useful, I guess not. What about the other one? I can free him. That that's entirely up to him. I would like to have the use of my full faculties again. That would be great. Ain't going anywhere, bitch, in your head. Well, I mean, if we could come to some kind of terms, but you don't seem to be amenable. You need to fucking deal oh, with no, us. No, I was talking to her, not you. You're cool. Uh, <laughs> gonna kind of, kind of be like, <laughs> yeah, kind of all right. awkward yeah, position. I don't, don't believe it, because I can't fucking do anything you don't want me to do. <laughs> so, we need... By the way, if you do have your cousin do that, that's the superpower for the day, that would be it. If you're saving her up to actually punch the demon, oh, uh, uh -oh. don't don't worry about it. I'll figure a way out. I, mm. don't you, you got a point, Steve. By the even way, even if I, I don't, something. I'll die gloriously. I'm fine with it. <sighs> or maybe ingloriously, whatever, whatever my character earns. Free the ghosts. Get out of the house, cuz. Go through a fucking wall if you have to. Go to the underworld if you have to, although I don't know if that's better or worse. Well, we'll go with th that's better or worse. <laughs> that's better I, better I, than I, here. I, I don't feel ready to encounter the river Styx in Chiron. Oh, you'd bypass all of that with, with the, the Americans' power. Really? Talking about Chris again. Chris, is there something you're not telling us? Or what now? Ever, Ever's character was possessed when you 
talk about you opening portals to the underworld. Cass has no idea you can do that. Oh, yeah. Thank, thank, no, fine. <laughs> All these years, I had no idea. Yeah, of course I can do that. Can it'll be fine. Me? It'll be fine. Don't question. Oh, I mean, <laughs> I don't know everything about you, Caius. I, I'm a medium. It's very obvious I, what that means. I, I thought you were a small. As... Uh. Oh, better hurry, cause it's coming back. No. Okay. Okay, uh, Aldous, what do we do? We need to... Oh! We need to get this Go ready. Go ahead, Aldous. Sorry. So, I, I apologize, I know we said, but I'm a little just trying to get my head around what our actual steps are to this. Like, what's the, like, what is it we're trying to do in order to, like, my ritual is to bring them here? To our room, or they can't walk through a physical portal unless they are physically managed. Got it. So, so we need to give them the physical thing. That's my the problem. Power is you banish them from this room. You can't do anything in here now. Right. This room is cleansed. <laughs> okay. So we need to go to the next room then. Can. So is as the demons coming back? Can I like? Uh, I would. I would like to ask the spirit inside me who is obviously very confrontational be like hey, my name's wanna... Bradley oh, what why, a do you, why do you think I picked you because, uh, because I'm awesome that's why right sure that checks <laughs> <laughs> um, hey uh, Bradley you say you say this devil's coming back for us you want to you wanna give, give us a hand in slowing it down you want me to use your body against the demon? Okay. I was thinking more of I go over here and help with I'm the technological part of you now. gadgets. We're the same. God damn it! God damn it, Bradley! Look what you do you got in mind? I don't punch for worked. shit, motherfucker. By the way, Bradley's talking to himself this whole time. Are Are you talking in third person there? Bradley, no, I'm talking to... to Bradley. Where's the next door? Yeah, you're talking to yourself. No, to Bradley. You yeah, your name is Bradley. I know my name is Bradley. You I'm talking to Bradley. Bradley. Don't Bradley. You... There's no other but Bradley. You're don't you get Bradley. me started right now. There is no uh, door to another room in here. And you're like tearing tapestries off the wall and trying to punch uh, through Bradley. the stained glass mm -hmm. this while this argument's happening. Hey, Brad. Uh, you realize Brad, when you kick a drug out of the way, there's a hatch. Of course there is. A cellar hatch. Dang it. No. All right, yes, Bradley, Brad. you, ready, you ready to go down? Let's go. Oh, oh you don't want to go down there. That's the only way we got out, unless you got another idea, Bradley. Well, Tell we're me all now. fucked. Yeah, we're all fucked. You got another idea? No? And all right. you and find someone else to find out. I'm yeah, now's concerned your chance, Bradley. That he keeps <laughs> Take the hatch referring to himself in the third person. I think we need to, you know. Bradley yanks the hatch open. Just blackness and a cold breeze that spells foul. We go only got a limited there. amount of time. That demon's coming fucking back. <laughs> the question okay, is if fun. we leave this area and we get to an area where the spirits are back, how will. How long do we even have before the demon gets its full power? Ever. Your body temperature radically increases. You start we sweating can't, profusely. Uh, we can't fight this uh, thing I don't feel unless good. we get them out uh, of here. This is so not We good. don't have a choice. Hit chance here. All right. I'll, okay. I'm going. Cool. I climb down into this. I guess we got it. Oh, shit. Chris takes his cell phone and just puts the flashlight on and just heads down the flashlight lights up flashlight. the lights up the whole area around the hatch lights up the hatch it doesn't do shit inside the hatch okay oh shit i am i am currently climbing down the hatch come on go go yeah Red Red all right after. you all descend into the blackness now your lights do work here but it's like they're muted it's like when you put a really bright light against your hand and you can still see the glow <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine. That's what you get. 
The stairs seem to go down for a strangely long period of time, too. Like, two, three full minutes. Uh, and of course, so halfway down, the hat slips. So, Bra so, Bradley, ah! on a scale of on a scale of zero to porn star, how fucked are we? Shocking. I don't want, I don't want your to answer to that. Please stop saying things out loud. <laughs> I'm really concerned for you. I'm just Scott talking to Bradley. We know you're talking to yourself. We got that. What no, are the I'm odds that Bradley has talking to Bradley. a fellow ghost named Bradley? Almost zero. That's ah. insane talk. That is crazy. That, that's that, that's nearly impossible. You are now in a different no, room. No, no, I'm talking to Bradley. You could try to explore the almost pitch black cellar, or you could just get to work right here. It's the floor. It's a different room. Um, get to work. Let's fucking get to work. Uh, well, actually, I'll use another. I'll use the power that lets me see and speak to any ghost in the vicinity. Just, okay. to, just to make sure that there's any here. Like, roll it. Um, stamina and a cult. And take your bashing damage. Any bashing damage from last session, any one had would be gone, but not lethal. It's been more than 15 minutes. Okay. Also, this is a... Uh, the cellar floor is stone, but it's damp stone. In a modern house, this would be concrete. You're fucking kidding me right now. Uh-oh, what'd you get? I'm gonna use the bonus die from... Arnaud, from Arnaud, yes, <laughs> yes. Say that for us, ever. You know how to say that. Arnaud, do till. Thank you. Thanks. I think. I know the story. I just can't <laughs> say the name. Just call him Arnie. Okay. Uh, so I use that bonus die. Is that act like a willpower, or is that just another die to roll? Oh, that's a bonus die. Yeah, that's a willpower, so you get a success. Yeah. Marginal success. Boom, so that goes, yeah, one success. There's a lot of them in here, but some of them are far away and indistinct. Okay. But yes, this room is once again full. I feel like when all the, when uh, Lupe banished the other room, most of them got shunted down here. Okay, so this would be, so based from what I'm saying, this would be an okay place to at least start working in... Yes. We're not, we're not opening a portal where there's just no freaking ghost to, like, leave. Correct. Okay. All right. Cool. Then I kind of yell out, and we have this small ghost. Like, okay, let's go. Let's start work. Let's, okay. Get I have a tough choice it. here, uh, ever or Cass. Mm, yeah. Save your cousin. You could save your cousin for physical combat against the demon, or you could use the superpower now and have her pull every spirit in the house into this room. Let's do it. Every All right, spirit. I got you, cuz. Thank you. All right, Aldis. Well, first let's do John. John, roll uh, your background plus wits. Difficulty? Eight, because you're out of your element with Aldis. Yeah. I'm spinning a willpower. I finally found the spend willpower button. Marginal success will give all this one bonus dice. Complete success will give him two, and a critical success will give him three. Look at me, I'm learning. All right, everything's in there. Let's hope. That is a complete success. All this two bonus dice to your roll. Hell yes, here we go. Bonus dice. Am I doing just another occult stamina roll? My, my necromancy? Yep, it's the same roll. For the, your spells, it just costs more bashing. It costs two. Two? Okay. Two level two oh, that's... I'll have... Or three to do level three. Yeah, that's going to hurt you. That hurts. You'll be at four bashing total for the night. That hurts real bad. Yeah, you'll be... Don't don't mark the bashing until after you make the roll, though, because you'll be taking Okay. Okay. Alright, so um, I am definitely going to spend a willpower on this because I'm not failing this roll. Penalty. 
All right. Stamina, occult, bonus dice two, willpower. Let's do it, guys. Hell yeah, let's do it. Get it done. Seven successes. Mm. Once you mark oh, it. Oh, that Pickle is success. slick. Hot damn. So, describe what it looks like, all this, but you have to integrate Brad's tools, which actually creates a visible static field in the air that they can use. Um, uh, like what's your they tool? Can, what's they can manifest out of the static. What's your device look like? Make it weird. My device is... So... You know those hot, um, the, those like triple uh, stands there, the, like holographic projectors. It does that, right? Where it? it places it around in a triangle and creates uh, nothing but like laser image, uh, like a million lasers going up into the roof, and then you actually see what looks like uh, the la the lasers cross, causing a static pattern. And you can actually see like things and hands just kind of like swing through and they just become a, l a little bit more when they pass through these uh, lasers. And it looks like they're close to coming out, uh, but not quite. And that's uh, where you can actually like choose who comes through or uh, they can choose how to walk through this almost uh, portal as they just walk through and then the lasers kind of like uh, construct them. Okay, so those lasers and things come through, does what John says. I take the ashes that I had from before, and I take a, like a, a scoop up some in my hand and let it run through my fingers, and then I put like a pile of it on the device. So it's kind of like this little mound. And then I take the two knives, and I focus my energy so that the blood starts to run again on them. Even if it's congealed and like dried, it starts to run again. And then it drips down and drips and then drip, 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 and it drips into the ashes. And then I take one of the knives and I stir it um, onto the device. And then I take the blade and I start writing in my stave and putting the designs onto the device itself. And then my cut from before from my hand. I just look at it, and with the energies that are happening, even though the wound has closed, it opens up again, and the blood starts to run from my hand, and it drips down, and then my blood fills the rest of it in. At that point, the mixture, the kind of paste-like substance that mixed from the blood and the ash together, starts to like congeal together, and it actually starts like pulsing. And then that mixes with the lasers and turns them blood red. And so the lasers and my powers mix together. And then when they, and then, and then you start getting the static coming off it, almost like the blood's like, you know, cracking and like breaking the devices. And then again, with those lasers, just blood and then a blood portal opens. No, not the portal. Sorry. Um, this like blood field like opens and if when the spirits fly through it that would they would come out from spirit one side physical through the other i like it damn the room immediately starts filling with 3d holographic blood covered spirits and as they begin manifesting they actually walk out of the hologram and become physical they're still glitching like a bad TV signal, and some of them are slightly translucent. Yes. Lupe's trying to record this with his phone. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and as they step out, they actually take on their physical form, but faded. And you realize they're all wearing modern clothing, and the majority of them are young, like teenagers to mid-20s. And then um, some thirty-year-olds, and then staggeringly young, uh, less of them as you out, well, uh, walk up the age tree. None anywhere near all this age. The oldest one looks like they're in their forties. And so all, as you as you yeah. wait, it looks like at least forty or fifty of them come through. It's a lot. I think we all slow turn to CJ. <laughs> to CJ to Chris. Yeah. <clears throat> I got I this. Like, 
Holy fucking okay. fuck. Shit. Thing's been doing this for a very long time. No, no, no. They're all wearing modern clothes. No, this has been getting everyone who's come here. Yeah, it's one come of to the this spirits, house. the the forty year old oldest looking forty year old female spirit who looks Excuse like a me, soccer mom, spoke. turns towards you all this and says, "Yeah, we all came to the haunted house, and that thing killed us to trap us here. We're all here for you. This is your fault." Uh, one of the other ones says, "No, it's not their fault. It's its fault." And Art interrupts amongst the ghosts. This whole thing was a trap laid for you, five. Oh, jeez. Wow. I mean, what's so fucking special about us? I don't know, but... Hot damn. Soccer, soccer mom says, You all worked for someone that this entity hates very much. And you, points at CJ, can create portals to the underworld to drag more in to give the house more power. And you, points at the medium, are a vessel for our mistress now that her previous physical vessel has been destroyed. And you, points at Lupe, you can force out the ghost we don't want once we have control of you. And you, points at all this. You saw what he could do. Your, your mistress. Some other ghost says, yeah, the demon, the one that possessed you, lady. Yeah. Let's get these guys uh, Your on the road. Let's get the fuck out of here. Your producer randomly and caused the show to crash. Apparently hated by the demon. Weird. All right. I mean, we uh, can't... That's, a, that's something to tackle at another time, I think. Yeah, we go get them out of here. Okay. That's your turn, CJ. <sighs> All right. Been a while since I did this. None of here. us are here willingly. We've all been trapped here through false fetters by this thing. Release us. All right. Um, let's see. And Chris kind of like looks around and is trying to find something with like a big cabinet of some kind, something with doors, physical doors. And uh. Uh, the spirits all radiate a faint glow enough to actually see roughly the cell you're in. Yes. And uh. There's no cabinets down here. It's all wine racks and old barrels of some kind. However, there is an archway going into a deeper part of the cellar. Yes, yes, it will. Okay, that'll work. So Chris goes up to the to this archway and uh, he's he's staring at it, and he kind of just like closes his eyes, like standing right in front of it, and he starts singing. Uh, country road. <laughs> Take me home to the place. Yep. Ah, everyone, everyone. West Virginia. West Virginia. Mount Mama. Mama. Take Country. me home. And like as he's oh, singing gosh, this chorus, you see like a little bright light in the center. And it slowly <laughs> starts to get bigger. And it almost looks like a galaxy is forming in the center. And it just gets bigger and bigger. And it's just filling up. And as the louder he sings, the bigger this little portal starts opening up. And it's literally just starlight and like beautiful nebulas and colors just swirling in the background. And there's like um, the ground that's level uh, with the floor is, um, is dirt, but like on the edges of it, it's light and like sparkling. Um, and kind of like dripping down um, with more light and dart. It's it's actually really nice. <laughs> and, well, perception plus occult difficulty seven and spend a point of willpower. Yeah. I also would like to use. I didn't use. Um, I got two votes last week, I believe. Yep. I want to use those too, just to increase my chances of this going well. Good call. Awesome. Yeah, because the point of willpower is just to make the power work. Yeah, goal. exactly. So, yeah, if you spend your votes, that's two successes before you roll. But see if you get more for a... All right, so that was Perception. Complete success. And Occult. Plus Occult. Yep. And then two bonus die, correct? 
Difficulty 7. No, bonus dies are just automatic successes in World of Okay. Got it. Difficulty 7. Come on, change that. Change. There it is. Okay. Perception and occult. Nothing else is clicked. And here we go. Did it go through? Darkness. Did. You have a total of four successes, which is a complete success. So, uh, the portal opens fully and completely. What it shows is uh, billowing white mist, some of which actually rolls into the cellar. The smell is undefinable. It doesn't smell quite like anything you can picture, but it sparks memories and it makes you feel uh, melancholy. It's memories of the past that you miss and it makes you feel sad. Things that, things that you've lost you can't quite remember and through the mist you can see some kind of city but the angles are all wrong like and it's off in the distance it's not right there spires at impossible angles and round parts where they should be square and square parts where it should be round and they're all this faint translucent silverish green color and you can see figures moving around that have two arms and two legs most of them but they're not right they're like crooked people. And some are shaped completely wrong. Some are too tall. Some are too short. It's very bizarre. And far in the background, near the city, is a giant river of uh, black water that the city seems to be built on. And the river carries off into the distance almost like a lake. Like one of the Great Lakes. You can't see the other side. How the spirits look at the portal and look at you guys. Now, what are you waiting for? Do you want to go? You have to free us so we can go. Come on. Oh, this is the bit, Aldous, where you need the blood of the innocent. Oh, I thought I you didn't actually need it for the other part. Oh, I, th I thought <laughs> I needed it for the other part. Okay, well, I mean, I know you thought so, and I let it happen because that's how it should be. Aldous doesn't really know. Okay. Oh. So I have no, both. The, so I have both the knives still. So. Yep. I just, just walk. Over. I look at the one with the blood of the innocent, and I'm like, um, okay. I need your blood. <laughs> you ain't gonna stab me again, are you, Aldous? So, um, like, what? I ask one of them, like, what do you need me to do? I don't want to get stabbed again. My hand still hurts. It, it might be the only way. To stab me again? I mean, he, I mean, he might not have to stab you. You, you, can, you can just, like... Have you, have you seen my I, hand, woman? It, it, have you seen my hand? Open. Just, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, move it my just it a little bit, really. One of the one of the spirits just, says, yeah. "No, it was only him because that was the only choice at the time." They all turn and look at Cass. Truly innocent. Uh. Huh? I mean, uh, if you're okay with a Cass. Oh, I, I don't mind, I just, I'm confused. Why are you looking at Cass for truly innocent? Obviously they're not. Ugh. Of all of you in this room, that one is the most pure. Well, I buy it. That one looks at all this. The most corrupted of all of you. Doesn't even bother explaining why. That one looks at Lupe. That one has... Too much skepticism in his heart. Might not act like it, but he does. He's a bit of a jaded past, too. He has secrets. That one looks at uh, Bradley. That one has corrupted himself by looking at so much corruption on the internet. All those conspiracy theories, all those thoughts have sunk into his head. Even if he doesn't hey, believe that they're in there, it makes you impure. I mean, maybe. And that one looks at true. Chris. That one is very promiscuous. What? <laughs> this doesn't, like, what? it's pretty monogamous. No. I, I don't know where that kind of personal attack is coming from. 
Wait, uh, that's uh, freaking polyamorous? Like, what? Like... Well, how else am I supposed to heal the wounds of my long, of my soulmate dying? <laughs> I fill other holes instead. Yeah, that tracks. Sorry. That, that tracks, yeah, obviously, that tracks. Whereas that one, they all look at Cass. Only thinks the best of those around her, even when it's the worst that's coming out. That's the most pure you have to offer here. Can't argue with that one. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's get to it. <sighs> Watching you all this. No, just, no. Just this enough hurts. blood. Take the knife, put it against Cass's hand. Did you sanitize it first? No time. He did not. <laughs> he didn't sanitize it when he cut you, bro, uh, CJ. No, run the blade God, against the hand. Okay, go ahead and uh, make us one of those famous 50 million successes intelligence plus cult rolls, all this. Um... For the slicey and dicey. So what's your willpower down to? I have five left. Okay. Just checking in case you keep spending it. Once you get around two, I'm going to start making you tea. Okay. Um. I mean, it's the last session. Screw it. Blow it. Four successes. Have a heart attack and... There it is. That's a complete success. You complete the ritual and you pick up the ashes and you blow them and they scatter through the ring and stick to all of the ghosts. Which makes their color change slightly. Okay. And they all sigh in unison and start filing through the portal. Go on, get! As the last one steps through, she turns into the soccer mom, she turns around and smiles at all of you and says, thank you. Good luck. You too. I knew we could go through with them. And then the hatch explodes open as the last one files through. And it's the little girl in the bloody torn white dress. <sighs> Looks down at all of you and says, now it's just us. Let's play! And the whole house starts creaking. Fucking cliche, motherfucker. You have two choices, and you're gonna DM this to me. You're not gonna say it out loud, because that, that will simulate chaos. <laughs> run deeper into the blackened cellar, run through the portal. There's no third choice. Oh. None of you are equipped to stand and fight, but you could say stand and fight. I'll let you. but none of you have... All of your powers work on ghosts, not demons. I thought the portal exploded. No. The, hatch. Oh. the last ghost went through it. Oh, the hatch. Oh, the back ha up yeah. to the top. The oh, portal's oh. in an archway in the cellar. Where did that portal lead to again? Shadow the underworld. Land. And remember oh. to tell me in a DM, not out loud. That's three. Oh, God. Sneaky, sneaky. That's just John. Just need John. It's a hard decision. <laughs> I know. I, I am sorry. I am. I think too much about my choices all the time. What would you care? Well, which Brad are we talking about? Brad or Brad? <laughs> I mean, there's Bradley and then there's Bradley. You're allowed. It's your character. Uh, it's up to you whether you scream 
or you swear, or what you do when you run. You all exclaim a noise when you run. And you see uh, Aldous and Lupe and Brad uh, bolt deeper into the cellar. And you see both of and you see CJ and Cass run through the portal, which no. collapses. <laughs> Y'all just split the party. Shit. Oh snap. The three of you who stayed in the cellar, you run deeper into the cellar. You hear it step you hear you hear it jump down the steps and land with a thud that shakes the house on the floor. As it starts walking towards you, everything around it, like the wine glasses and the, the racks and the wine bottles, start exploding. You think it's growing too, or at least its shadow is. Let's burn the shit down, guys. Start trying to set fire. Burn everything. Just start with you. The can. cellar is uh bri- is uh stone, stone and brick. There's wood in here. Yeah, like the but the, the cellar itself is not made of. Okay. And if we set enough of it on fire. I'm going. Okay, so this is John the tech enthusiast saying that most of my stuff is powered by lithium ion batteries and if I destroy those batteries that can cause a very localized explosion that sets shit on fire very small explosion but Dump enough batteries. Make a courage roll, John. Whatever. Difficulty eight. Luke has just trying to set fire. Brad, make a courage roll, Brad. Difficulty eight. Uh, which Brad? You're the only Brad who rolls dice. All right, we're gonna do another thing. No willpower on this one because it's you don't know you're doing it. It's a subconscious thing. All right, so four difficulty eight. You have way too much stuff checked. I, 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 Still too much checked. Okay, what do I have checked here? Why did it not uncheck? Oh, that's right. Because I, I'm just blind as a bat. That's fine. also you have to uncheck willpower spent. Um, well, fourth time's a charm. <laughs> Come on. All right, let's try this. One success. You did think to grab your backpack, but you didn't think to zip it up and half the stuff spilled out. High or low? Uh, with you. The dice are just going to roll whatever they would fucking want because it's you, but high because it's also you. 91. <laughs> you do have lithium spare batteries in the backpack. However, do you have time to rig them? That's the question. So, make your first. Uh, we're going to do. Let me look at your sheet since they're not technology on the watch sheet. We're going to use science plus wits. You're going to need a total of 10 successes to set the batteries off as an explosive. One roll per turn. Begin. All right, Bradley, you ready to do this? No answer. Also, you feel lighter. Oh, you went through gone. the portal. God damn it. You leave me alone when I want to talk to him. Fuck that guy. <laughs> science plus my tech kit, you said? No. Science plus uh, wit. All right. Difficulty. Six. Six. We'll need to accrue ten successes across how many rolls it takes or when you get your head torn off. Alright, well I'm spending willpower in each of these if I can. I don't know, what's your willpower at? Four. When you hit two, you'll start taking fatigue penalties. Okay. Uh, just making sure this is the only thing's checked. And... Seems to be ready to go. Okay, and what would you like to do, Lupe? Five successes for the audience. He's halfway there. Oh, 
You're going to try to set the fire, correct? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna you have any fire. dots in survival? Right. Yes, I do. Survival plus wits. To know how to movie science low content alcoholic beverages into a big explosion. <laughs> right. Sure. Difficulty? Six. You will also need to accrue ten successes. And you and, and Aldis can try to help one of you, but not both. Or do his own thing. I mean, could we just, like, work together? No. Your thing is very different than his. Okay. Two! Alright, Aldis, who do you want to help? Lupe is a lot farther along. Yeah, Lupe is starting to. Lupe's trying to set a fire. Bradley's trying to create C4 out of batteries. Stop. I look, I look at the two of them, and I'm like, "We've got to start a fire." Bradley, what in <laughs> God's name are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't no I don't one ever know teach shit you about C4? Didn't no one ever teach you how to start a fire? We need kindling. We need a spark. Come on, man, get your shit together. And I start grabbing like, <laughs> okay. Because even though I know Bradley like mechanically is farther along, it would be beneficial to help him and get us where we need to. All this would have no but it's all this. fucking clue how to and help. I just look. I just I just look at him and I go. <laughs> I take half a second to look at him. It, it's and probably I literally, better for Bradley if all I, this isn't helping. I literally utter the words. I look at him straight, deadpan in the face. Okay, Boomer. <laughs> <laughs> we saved that the entire game. I'm very proud of us. Yes. That's... It's now been used. Cannot be reused in this game. No. Uh, so I'm going to grab, like, any piece of wood, like an old barrel, maybe. Or oh, yeah, definitely. If you're still like... running, too, by the way, as you do this. Yeah, like tapestries on the wall, if I can pull those down. Anything that burns. I'll just start bringing yes. Lupe, like you know, fuel for the fire, basically. You have survival dots. Do I? Question mark? I do. Holy shit. Wits plus survival. Difficulty six. Wits plus survival. Difficulty six. And screw it. I will spend another one of my willpower. I've got a couple spare left. I mean, when you hit two. I will. I will. Both of you. Yeah. And I'm gonna, I'm basically gonna be blowing willpower the rest of this game. Like I'm not gonna stop when I'm at two. Um, um, yeah. I'm just seeing if there's anything else I can do here. No. Three successes. All right. Which brings me and Lupe up to five, so we're now even with Brad. Brad, roll again. Well, I roll dice for no reason. Someone's about to get fucked. Uh, two. Seven. You're at seven. Okay. It's fun. Anybody got dodge? Trained? Trained. Oh, no. It would be uh <laughs> Yes. All this <Okay>. does. <laughs> yeah, uh, I do. Dex plus dodge for anyone who has it trained, go in orders to start with all this. Difficulty six. Dex and dodge difficulty six. I wonder how much damage a barrel does. A lot, lot, probably. Probably. It, it takes out one, what? one plumber. <laughs> it takes out one. <laughs> one okay, success. That was, good. that was good. One success does not beat their attack roll. Get hit. Ow. Yes. Uh, all right. Let's try this. Uh, what's nope. the damage? No love. Nothing. Uh, anybody who doesn't dodge is going to take three lethal. Oh. Uh, and to be clear, can you use willpower on the dodge? No. 
Now, what that means for you, because you're the only one who's currently hurt, Aldous, is it pushes it down. So the bashing moves down and the unbelievable goes to the top. What? You don't you don't mark lethal under the bashing. So you start at the top. Right. The damage meter. So I would have your... four bashing going down and three lethal going down. Except the lethal would be at the top. The worst damage is at the top. When you hit lethal in that last box, you die. If you hit bashing in that last box, you just start getting lots of penalties. Look at my character sheet and see if I've got this right. Like, that's the best I can do, because I don't understand exactly what you're saying. Well, that's Bradley. Alright, so lethal is the last check mark, right? Oh, that's aggravated. Lethal's the middle. Okay, and then we just got three of those levels. Oh, that is not correct, Steve. It goes like this. Oh, you know, the casual sub indulges. Why is that not? There we go. Okay. Like that. So, the bashing moves down and is replaced by the lead. If you have. You have no lethal. damage, so you just do three middle boxes starting at bruise. Bruise, hurt, injured, all in the middle, John. So we have ne so we have negative one to our rolls right now. Correct. Same for Lupe. Okay. Bradley, he's got bruised, hurt, injured at lethal, wounded, bald, crippled, and incapacitated at bash. Meaning he's still active and conscious. You get that juicy minus five penalty. I Brad uh, Bradley Aldous does. Bad. No, Aldous. Oh. Aldous is hurt bad. The barrel hits him, and you actually. Uh, hear his arm break and you see his collarbone depressed because it broke too. Yeah, his whole there. left side is broken. Multiple fractures. A piece of that might have went in his lung. You two, the barrel hits you, knocks you down, lacerates you, knocks the wind out of you. You got impaled by some pieces. Best part is, both your healers went through the portal. Yep. <laughs> right. Bradley, make your next roll. It'll do the penalty right. automatically if you have the box to check. I believe I have them checked correctly. You can see my thing, right? I will check. All right, spending a willpower. Put you at two, your t difficulty goes up by another one. So that means you got to set your difficulty to eight. Eight this time? No, you don't need both boxes, John. Just the worst one. There you go. Like that. Okay. Difficulty eight. Spending a willpower. Uh, this time it's science. And wits. And wits. Lost science there for a second. All right, here we go. I believe. Just one more go around, make sure I don't have anything else checked, and go. You're done. Lupe, make your roll. You're only going to have the plus one penalty. You, your willpower is still high enough. The mine, and it'll calculate your penalty. You don't have to set it. Just set it to six. Uh, all right. I would have used the willpower, so three, six. You're at eight, and all this. Let's see if you can help any with all those penalties. So another survival and um, wits? Yep. And difficulty stops at ten and never gets higher, even though you're technically past ten. So I, wait, so I need to... So you, your, diff, your penalty from your injury is so high, you might as well keep blowing willpower. It's not going to get worse. <laughs> right. So I need to actually change my difficulty to account for the... Yeah, just set it straight to 10. Okay. Cool. Alright, uh, yeah, I'm gonna blow another willpower. And, uh, wits and survival. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't worry, that's impossible because you spent willpower, but it's funny that's what it says. Um, 
<laughs> I don't understand why. Oh, well, that's a lot of dice. No, uh, no, no. You need to look at that because that's not right. There's like forty-seven dice results. Yeah, I feel like I feel like changing the diff. I feel like changing the difficulty to ten and having the health stuff checked threw this thing off. Let's see. Let's imagine how much worse it would have been if you didn't use the willpower. <laughs> it would have been uh, <laughs> negative four instead of negative three. Let's All find right. out if that's what it does. Roll it again. <laughs> oh my god! It can't handle how hurt he is. I, I know what it is then. Too I need to old. Take that one off. Okay, now do it. Oh, that makes sense. Negative yeah. 51. <laughs> it's because the sheet thinks you're dead. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> there we go. Hey, that pretty good right. guy, you rolled yeah. pretty well. So, you got right. one success from the willpower. Yes. Which puts you at nine, which I'm going to call close enough so that you can complete this at the same moment. Lupe starts the Lupe and Al just start the fire and it takes off like mad because obviously wine is ridiculously flammable. And uh it's the most alcoholic of beverages. And Bradley's like explosive fire. Chuck And the house explodes into kindling. Bradley, can I get a Kobe? <laughs> Kobe <laughs> He is a ghost. Is he one of the ghosts? I'm sorry. Oh no! I'm sorry, no. <laughs> I'm sad, Lewis. <laughs> it's too soon. Uh, the house explodes into kindling. <laughs> With us inside of it. <laughs> the scene changes. The scene changes to Cass oh, no. and Chris. Cass and Chris. Yeah. You step through the portal. And you hear all of the ghosts in concert say thank you. We owe you. And you walk into the fog and then the fog blows away and clears. And you're outside of the house. And you're like, what? And you run for the car. And as you're sprinting towards the car, the house fucking explodes. Because the, the fog cleared, but it's still a foggy day it is morning time so because it's foggy fog mutes noise it's a very muted understated explosion knocks you all on your faces but you need to get up dust yourselves off spend a moment freaking out over your friends or not because all this and <laughs> two days pass two days where you have vague memories talking to the police trying to tell them your story but it's all jumbled up in your minds. Because you're, you know, uh, shock, massive shock. And you made your way back to uh, home, which is, in this case, you all have a place you go to in the Midwest. We never specified it because it doesn't matter. Like a home base in the Midwest where you go to when big exhausting cases are over. And the two of you are sitting in your living room, just kind of staring off into the distance. You okay? No, are you? Fuck no. Taking chugs from some beers. <laughs> Just don't want to talk. Just melancholy. Staring off into the distance. It's rainy and foggy. It's just kind of sad. U3! We jump to U3. The cellar explodes as you run deeper into it. And you manage to throw yourselves into the next connecting cellar room, which is a staircase. You throw yourselves down the stairs because you can't see shit. All this breaks more shit because it's old. And, uh... But you land in the sub-basement. The sub-basement is packed with a dirt ceiling and stone reinforcement. So, when the explosion happens, fire rushes down the hole and you all get minor burns. But the house doesn't collapse on you. Like, the sub cellar survives the explosions because they're built for it. Hours pass, emergency responders show up, pull you out of the rubble and administer emergency aid. No one dies. Although all this is permanently going to have a lot of lips. That arm's never going to work right. But you're alive. They pull you out of the rubble. The sun is coming over the horizon because it's finally dawn. 
It's a bright, sunshiny day, and you made it. There's no sign of Kaz or CJ. Like, your van is still there. They're not. You spent two days talking to the police. It's quite her It's quite the thing going on, because there wasn't even supposed to be a house there. And they're like, you blew up a house that doesn't exist. And you're like, yes. and, and Aldous and Bradley are like, yeah, there were ghosts. And then, or I mean, Bradley and uh, Lupe are like, there's ghosts. And Aldous is like, smack, smack. Yeah, don't ask any more questions. We're going home. That's how the whole thing went. I'm going to be like, I'm going to be like, I mean, if it were, I mean, what house? Yeah. What, what house? And then house. they finally write off whatever story, cover story they're going to use. Natural gas pocket no one knew was there. Exploded, caused the sinkhole. What the hell ever. I hope them You guys are a bunch a of trespassers, but like you're a ghost hunting show, so they just give you a slap on the wrist and tell you to stop being dumb, especially you old men. You should know better. I think I learned so two days, la- two days later, you finally make it back to your home base where you go after a long case and you walk in and it is raining today but it's not foggy and you look around and it's weird because when you got there the front door was open like just hanging open and when you got inside there are beers missing but they're not anywhere to be seen so you all grab some beers and start setting about leaning over your table taking chugs filling out the missing persons form for your friends Maybe not all this, because he never did trust Kaz. And for just a moment, while you're filling out the forms, and there's a hush, and everyone stops talking, and you think you hear disembodied ghostly voices say, You okay? Fuck no. You? No. But you see nothing. And the camera fades out on you three sitting on the same couch as those two. But they're not here, because they're still in the underworld. And... You know, I was so sure I was going to die. Y'all muted, too. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'm purposely muted. (laughs) Not necessarily dead, but you're still in the underworld. Love it. And someday, because this is our World of Darkness universe where everything is connected... Someone will come rescue you. Oh, yes. But not Aldous, apparently. But not Aldous. <laughs> Maybe Aldous. Might have to be Aldous. <laughs> it's not I was going to retire. They keep pulling me back in. Right when I thought I was out. They keep pulling me back in. I took a knee. Took an arrow to the knee. But they keep pulling me <laughs> back in. I took an in. arrow to the knee. I took or a barrel, barrel to, the to the shoulder. shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> To wow. the house so, in the back. That, I'm not going to lie, that came together really well. Better that than was I beautiful really th- choices leading to that ending. Yes. Like, like, I am so loving this. Yeah. <laughs> like, your stories oh all to come, always come together great, but I was kind of like, you know, I was expecting it to be, you know, very, uh, what's the... Yeah, the ending when it's like, and then they went to do this, and they went to do that, and very, like, set, but that came together, and... That's not how ghost stories end. I know. It's... Ghost stories end sadly and quietly. Right. Well, I'm just saying, like, I thought that was a perfect <laughs> ending, so... It was, sense. yes. So, mm, keeping sad. your comments to five minutes or less for the audience, in order of least experience with World of Darkness to most, I'm gonna ask what you think about Ghost Hunters. That means we're starting with you, Lewis. Ghost Hunters, I think, is like a really. It's been kind of nice as like an introductory without like worrying about oh, there's so many of these uh, supernatural things, uh, and just kind of focusing in on one particular one. And it's just been, it's been kind of nice because it it feels the most. You can just get that shock right away without like any extra preconceived notion. I, th- I think it plays really well to just twist the little things because you're just you're you're kind of already real, just little things that could be off. 
David. Uh, I really liked this. I wasn't sure what to expect coming in. Um, full disclosure, Tyler had let me know that it was going to involve a certain character that I had a hand in creating from a previous game. <laughs> so he did warn me that my own act. <laughs> Why, hello there, consequences of my own actions. Um, <laughs> and... and uh, <laughs> So I wasn't quite sure what to expect with all of that, and uh, this was really cool. Like, you play mortals, but um, the game gives you enough cool powers, whatever you're focused in, um, that, you know, you can interact with things in creative ways. Like, I used one power a lot, but it kept being used in ways that were, the situation made, made it feel different, and I, uh, I, I like that. I like knowing what a character does in a very kind of simple way, but being creative with it and kind of, you know, playing around with it so that was cool Tyler you mentioned that all the powers you used are from the game itself you weren't like making up like crazy stuff on your own so that's awesome that those powers are there for you know the game to throw at us um, I really liked it I liked the way that all the mechanics came together Tiffany I I'm sad right now like I'm happy and sad because like I fully expected CJ to die. Like, I expected it to happen. But, like, he's dead, but not dead. But at least he's, like, he has company, so he's not by himself. So, like, yeah, and Cass is good company. They, they can work through their differences as little as they were, because it was a ghost in his head. It, it wasn't personal. Um, honestly, though, I really, really did enjoy it because you can literally make any kind of, if you wanted, any trope from, you know, reality TV ghost hunting shows. You could have the hardcore cynic as Aldous. You could have the scaredy cat who believes in everything. You could have, you know, the medium. You can have the dude that they send to the attic and gets locked in, you know, the tray in the morgue for an hour, like Lupe. You know, you got the tech guys and it was really fun to experience this, to, to be able to fit in every little thing, you know, and you, the little things you wouldn't even think of, and this has that, you know, they have those, those little things that kind of tie everything together, and it, it blended out really nicely. I'm, I honestly, if I ever had the courage to, you know, do a, to be a GM, I would pick this to be my first one. Nice. John. Um, the re the the reason why I like this system in particular, one one of the very one of the many, many reasons I absolutely adore this, not only from just like the real world aspects of the ghost hunting trope and the people uh, tied to it, but the fact that you can I mean beat on me with a spatula apparently. Um the fact that you can take literally anything you find in this genre or trope or even in real life if you can find a reason for it and just kind of slap it in there and it works and that's one of the things that i kind of love is is just that half step away from what really uh, away from act from real life uh that kind of engages me it's like okay they're now you're the person playing you know the guy who goes into the house and you could actually do that in real life you can visit these haunted places in real life um and i kind of really love that it makes it a little a, a touch you know more real to me and i kind of uh kind of really love that and like i highly ex i am very surprised three of us died I thought for sure the other two were going to be the ones that lived. I'll be honest with you, um, but yeah, like I'm, I'm excited to delve more into the five dot tech rank. I, I think I just, like I just scratched the surface. There was a lot going on and it was moving very fast, but I just scratched the surface of the five dot tech rank. And uh, yeah, if you guys want to see what what it's all about, like it. Uh, sign up for the the Kickstarter. Go go get yourself uh, go get yourself the book because it's fa a fantastic system. I love it. Okay, ever having played Mummy, Vampires the Masquerade, Age of the Ascension, Wraith the Oblivion, Werewolf the Apocalypse, yeah, 
I haven't played all the 20th anniversary lines. What do you think? Wow, that I just now realizing you've played them all yet. I need to have like a, a an Onyx Path publishing birthday, I guess? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have dragged all these people through the Onyx Path genre, but ever more than most. Mostly because it... longest term of this group is the only reason. Soon uh, they will all have those li ribbons. <laughs> also, ever if, more. If you... <laughs> And if, if you don't have at least one in rotation, I, I do throw a tantrum, so there's That's that. That's correct. <laughs> not, not really, but I really, like, I want to do it again, but, like, more of a long-term one. Yeah. Because I feel like you can take your character from zero skills, introduce them to their trauma, and then have them, you know, build up their powers, have random encounters with other splats, uh, like vampires or werewolves even, and they're like, oh, that was weird, don't even know what that was. And it could just go so many places. It was interesting to have more mortal-like powers. Like, it was, it, was, it was a little frustrating in a way, because it was- One barrel like, can kill you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it made you clench the seat a little hard. Yeah. It, uh, it, for it, sure. It got the adrenaline running there a couple times. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the, the choices of portal or cellar, well, you know, you could possibly do some sort of protection thing if you were non-human. Or you could possibly escape from wherever you go in the portal. Nope. Nope. That's just... It's entirely... F different from the other games. But that's what makes it fun. I agree. Coming from the GM's perspective, I will say... Much like many Onyx Path manuscript games... When I have the full book... We will do a campaign out of this. It's just get through for most of the manuscript games I've tried. But, yeah. Because, you know, the manuscripts give you enough to play the game, but there's always more in the full book. It's juicier. Plus, it's fun to hold the book, right? Uh, I, I do feel like this could have extra spooky if you're, like, hanging out you know, a after, you know, the, the pandemic ends. Stay safe, people. Yeah. If you're ever sitting around with your physical group, and you've got like the candles lit, girthy candles, uh, and you've got the spooky woo decorations and it's Halloween, you've got like a, a, a spirit board, a talking board in the the room. It could, it could, it, it has Steve and I would meet up ahead of out. time and we'd set up stuff all over the room to make creaks and bangs and crashes. Oh yes. Great, yes. I would <laughs> end you. <laughs> oh, so many little- Bluetooth I would not attend, cause- <laughs> So many little Bluetooth speakers I would, ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> Um, also from the GM's perspective, you can take this very different ways than we did too, if you're curious. I took the approach where they're the hapless ghost hunters, but you can actually make the ghost hunters the antagonists. And the book has entire section devoted to conspiracy organizations, not, not like hunter conspiracies, but big, large, overwhelming groups that send ghost hunters out to actually find, track, capture ghosts and other supernaturals and drag them back. It has extensive information on how they can be dangerous for rates that even vampires have done properly. Yeah. Um, more than most of the other splats. Uh, also, I'd like to point out the way they wrote this book is great. Every one of the Onyx books always has a section about how the protagonist views the world. Like, what do they think about mages? What do they think about vampires? How does a ghost hunter think about ghosts? This book, they didn't just list it out. This book, that entire chapter is actually written like a ghost hunter's internet blog and they're talking to each other with their blog posts. Oh, that's super cool. You should check it out. It's pretty awesome. It's in character, the whole chapter. So, yeah. Ghost Hunters. We liked it. You should definitely check it out. Beyond that, however, our ghost hunting crew may have escaped their nightmare, mostly intact, 
But have no fear, our World of Darkness saga will continue with the Mage of the Ascension story to debut in a few weeks from now on the Onyx Path channel. As for other terrifying tales and awesome adventures you can enjoy with us, you can catch me, Elder Checos, as GM on Sundays with our Tales of Cosmic Horror, Tuesdays with our Chronicle of Darkness, No Time for Reality, and Thursdays with our Stories of Sin, playing Cult Divinity Lost and a little bit of Alien the RPG. On Mondays, we have Conan, Adventures in Age Undreamed of, Hugmire, How the Pirate Stole you time, Yule Time on Wednesdays, which will be on this channel. And Dungeon of the Mad Mage on Fridays, all at 9 p.m. Eastern. You can catch us this Friday on our channel playing our Halloween one-shot, Night at the San Sanitarium with Onyx Bat's very own Travis. Next Saturday on the 7th, our 24-hour Extra Life Game Day Marathon, starting at 10 a.m. Video games, live streams, non-stop for 24 hours. For Send the Red Bull and cocaine, please. <laughs> Cast. Uh... Since I know we changed stuff recently, you don't have to tell them the days, but you can let the viewers know which shows they can catch you in. And if there's any other cool online stuff, they should put you up in. Um, well, first off, Tyler, I just want to say, every time you try to say how the pirates stole Yule Time, it sounds like you're saying Yule Tide, and it's like an Alabama fan wishing you Merry Christmas in a weird way. Yule Tide! It's the three sports fans out there think that's hilarious. Okay, so... I'm one of them, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> you can't Tide. stop the Crimson Tide, Steve. <sighs> yeah, I'm Steve. I you may have lived in the... Alabama for a while. You... Uh, yeah, I am Steve. You can find me on the internet at Voodoo Arcade, and you can find me in a series of games on both this channel and Vorpal Tales that are of specific role-playing systems on certain days of the week. That is literally the best amount of information I can give you at this time. The next time you'll catch Steve will be tomorrow for the Starfinder finale. Yes. This season finale. Yes, we got a heist. We, we Our heist fell apart in the very You're all first gonna die. scene. Oh my god. Yeah, tune in tomorrow for the heist. Um, am I still playing on Friday this week? Yes, because that's the Halloween one-shot. Halloween one-shot on Friday. Tune in with Travis from Onyx Path to join us. I'll be playing a person. It'll be fun. Next. Yeah, uh, as someone who celebrates Yuletide, I'm just gonna, just gonna roll tide. No. <laughs> Did someone say r r r roll tide? Don't make me go kinda, 57 like on remix. your butt. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you kind of already do that? I mean, yeah, I guess so. I really like playing a villain. It's a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> yeah. We're so surprised, Kiliak. I don't know what you're talking about. Ooh, what <laughs> if Kiliak and John ran into each other? Oh, dear God. Oh. And you know they won't. Oh. Oh, oh John. Okay. Anyway. Hi and bye and all the in-between greetings. I have been... Cass Marco Polos, um, which there's a joke in the last name, Marco Polo, Marco Polos, Marco Polos, uh, you know, like hide and seek with ghosts. Steve Austin laughed. It's, it's better when you, <laughs> when you explain the jokes. Steve nailed it. <laughs> so, um, in UA, uh, you can find me on the internet as Changeling Ever, and I will be in every single game that Vorpal Tales plays because I am one with Vorpal Tales and Vorpal Tales is one with me. I have their phylactery right over there. Yes. Thank you. Game My Master. Sorry. <laughs> My name is uh, Lewis. Uh, I was playing Lupe Usman. Uh, unfortunately, this looks like it's probably going to be the last of you see of me for the next little bit. Uh, We're all very sad. I'm Lewis's really day job here. is stealing him for the winter. No. To hell, Lewis! We, we, we just got your year. back, Lewis. You better disappear <sighs> down under that desk, sir, because <laughs> you, you, you 
How dare! Got my hopes up again to dash them against the rocks. I Lewis, will, you have to stop playing up. with my emotions. I will chain him up and drag him back in the new. <laughs> You know, I, like one of two I am definitely down for the chain. Conan X. You know. <laughs> you're, you're one of two people I can talk magic with. Come on now. Style, style. The pink, fluffy, uh, fur-covered chain. Oh, I already got a pair. Sweet. Fun. No, double down. Right. <laughs> Don't it's worry, they're going to go yeah. missing. Are you, are you finished, Lou? I was. I don't want to. Okay. Yeah, I'm literally Hi. finished. Like. Let's carry on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bye, Lou. I'm, I'm underscore eighty eight on Twitter. Uh, you can find me playing Conan. Sorry. <laughs> yep. And Conan Pugmire. And yes. So I will be on Pugmire, and I will be in Conan. And I know for sure I'm playing Izzy in Mad Mage with the awesome DM, Patty Shakes. He's really awesome and he's funny and he does great voices. Yeah, he's our best NP. Yeah, no, I, I, I absolutely adore his voices. They're very, very funny. They're awesome. And it was really fun playing this game. And honestly, if I wasn't so like limited income, I totally like buy this book, like, cause the Kickstarter is still going. Them stretch goals, man, they're like almost done. It's so good. But uh, I'm definitely looking forward to when this book comes out, so that I can drool at it and just put it on my wish list. You see, DM. All right, John. All right. So I have been and continue to be a person who is great at math. Don't don't you at me. Um, I am going to be found here, I believe, Wednesday coming up. I don't think I'm leaving. Close this out. You are in Pugmire on Wednesdays. You are in uh, Stories of Sin Thursdays. And you are also in Fatty. Hell yeah. So, uh, yeah, the, starting with the earliest date is tomorrow we're going to be doing our finale starfinder it's going to be exciting and we're all going to die just like we all died here um and then on fridays uh we're going to do the thing i'm not sure what we're doing this week i think we're doing i think we're continuing cult this week if i remember correctly um no we're going nope. to alien okay or halloween one to, shot yeah. i don't fuck up my outro at all all right bring caffeine because that one doesn't stop Oh, hell yeah. All right. So I'm going to have to let my wife know about that. But uh, yeah, so that's that's everything that's going on with me. Also, um, just wanted to let you all know we're in a free country right now, but it might not be if you don't vote. So go fucking vote. Apologies in advance for saying that, but go vote. Stop the stories over. I don't think you'd find much disagreements. And lastly, don't forget to follow Onyx Path on Twitch. Follow Vorpal Tales on our Twitch channel uh, or the podcast service you're listening on. Look us both up on YouTube. Check out our website, VorpalTales.com. You've got all the links to us, including our Discord and our Patreon, if so inclined. Until Monday, when you will see Sean run a one-shot of Frostlands of Fenrilic here on this channel, we bid you happy Halloween and good night. Good night. Good night.